Wow, it's Tony Alex again and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a three-phase induction motor in direct online style. First, let's understand the schematic diagram. Here is the power circuit diagram and the control circuit diagram. If all this seems new to you again, I have to review my previous video on electrical materials, a machine installation. So for a three-phase dual start, I'll need the following components. So we are going to have a triple pole circuit breaker. This is an MCB circuit breaker. I'm going to have a conductor. And then we are going to have also a thermal over relay to protect the motor from sustained overload. And then we are also going to have the motor itself. As you can see, that's the three-phase induction motor. And then the push button switch, of course. In this case, I'm starting to terminate uh, my circuit breaker and I've brought the conductor circuit breaker to the board as you can see it. So I'm not going to use the actual circuit breaker, the one you're seeing there, because the board has the circuit breaker already installed in place. Remember this one is a live board, I can test my system after installation. So what I'm doing here is just connecting the live one, live two and live three from the output of circuit breaker to the input terminals of the conductor. So the T1, T2 and T3 from circuit breaker goes to a L1, L2, L3 of the conductor. Then for this kind of components, the conductor will be just connected direct to the thermal overload relay. There's no need to use conductors, so it can lock as you can see. So what I need to do is to terminate the output of the thermal overload relay, that's T1, T2, T3, to the motor. And then I'll connect together my thermal overload relay and the conductor. But if you if viewers can't do that, then it means you'll have to connect the output of the conductor to the input of the thermal overload relay. And in that case, you'll have achieved the power circuit diagram in this manner. So I'm just uh, terminating my conductor to the thermal overload relay. And then now the last part is to take the live one to the U1, V1, and uh, W1, which are the input terminals. Then U2, V2, and W2, usually we take them as auxiliary uh, terminal for the motor. So for this case, I'm going to connect them together in so the auxiliary terminals of the motor that is u2 v2 and w2 connect them in star what i'm just meaning that connect it to be v1 v2 to, to w2 and uh, u2 to w2 that you have done so in this case i've already terminated the auxiliary part in star so that's done with the power i can test and you can see it's running but remember i'll be doing it manually so in this i have to connect the control circuit and in this case my control circuit starts with the powering the control circuit so i'm going to use one of the power from, from the conductor i'm going to loop it direct to the thermal overload relay pin 90 uh, terminal number 95 so the terminal number 95 is a is a normally closed terminal so i'm going to use it so i'm, I'm terminating it uh, to 95 then after 95 it's also good that we loop 95 and 97 but in this case, I'm not going to use pin 98, so I'm just looping for formality. But uh, even if you don't loop, it doesn't mean that the circuit won't work, so it will still work. So you need to energize in pin 95. So if you, for your case, you can decide to use a single pole MCB in this case, instead of just looping direct from conductor or from circuit breaker direct, so you can do that. Then from pin 96, you take, I'm, I'm sorry I'm using a pin, but it's terminal 96, so I'm going to terminate number 96 to my stop button the stop button the one we are referring to as normally closed push button uh, the reason why we call it normally closed is that when you press it will now not be normal it will open in operation normally open is a start button so when you press you are now closing the circuit because in normal it is open so when you close you close the circuit and in that case the circuit function so the red one is the normally closed uh, which is stop button so one side of the as i say is remember we usually say it, is, it has terminal one and terminal two so terminal one is from p96 um, terminal 96 of uh, thermal overload relay uh, goes direct to pin one or terminal one of the stop button and then terminal two it will take to the start button which is the normally open so I'm going to terminate terminal 2 to the start button, the green one, the one you can see. Uh, that's the color code when we are following the British standard, according to the IE regulation. So from the red, I will go to the green, and in this case I'm just taking from pin 2. Now goes to pin 3 of the start button. Remember, a start button is usually pin 3 and pin 4. If you can study the control schematic diagram, 
it will give you the exact right. And now from pin four or the other pin of the start button, you take it direct and you'll go you'll take it to the energy coil. That is the energy coil of the conductor that is A1. Remember you have put it so the energy coil is A1 and A2. The A2 will be just there from the needle. So you can see um taking my uh, uh, my conductor or my cable from start button to A1 is slightly below live one so it is not the same A terminal the one I've used for live one the yellow line so that is A1 so after looping A1 you also have to again loop from A1 to uh, a normally closed uh, terminal uh, that is the 13 terminal 13 and then from uh, terminal 13 we are going to terminal 14 now from terminal 14 i'm taking back to the start button but pin 3 of the start button pin 3 of the start button or alternatively you can still use stop button but let it be pin 2 of stop button if you place it in pin 4 of the start button then your circuit won't hold it will be when you switch on it uh, the the the, 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 the conductor coils uh, releases itself it does not hold for long that's we call it a holding pin the pin number 14 then you can see my black conductor that's the neutral i'm terminating at the a2 and in that case i make my energy coil complete as you can see now the system is complete and ready for testing so all i'm going to do is to energize the board and you can see everything running was that nice you can try it on your end remember this one can be applied in motor installation like installing a water pump yeah a motorized special mill can do all that uh, i think it was pleasure showing you this please follow me if you're first time if you haven't watched me on youtube just go on my youtube search at trainer on tiktok i'm at trainer and uh, see you next time